All right, we've used SketchUp to create components with measurements. We then made components using those pieces so we can basically copy and paste from our library. Uh, we assembled the pieces together with the Move tool as well as the Tape Measure tool. We drew custom pieces on the bottom that fit using the protractor and the tape measure. Uh, we applied a paint, like a texture to it and then we added our dimensions. Now, I have removed all the dimensions for this. What you could do is just make a copy of the chair and just paste it in the, the design space. But what we are going to do today is learn how to disassemble this chair in a clean fashion so that you can make a tutorial guide just like the website that we use to actually make our plans for this chair. So to start off, I'm going to make a a rectangle that's flat on the ground that's let's see let me go further away Doop. okay using that blue there we go 12 inches comma 12 inches I'm going to now push pull or extrude it 12 inches so I now have a square foot no I have a cubic foot in this polygon I'm gonna be using this to regiment my movements I'm going to have very clean, organized movements of my parts. So, to do this, I get the Select tool, and what I'm going to do is select everything that isn't the back legs. So let's go with this. I'm going to hold Shift. I'm going to select all the different parts. i got to make sure I rotate so I get all the different parts. Looking good. All right, so now that I've selected all these different parts that are separate from the back, I'm now going to use the Move tool. The shortcut for that is M. To move all these parts, I'm going to select one corner of the box and slide in a dimension. So I'm going to slide forward 12 inches. This has now moved everything 12 inches forward from the back. Now, if I want to do it again, I can just slide forward one more time. So, I now have this back piece. You may remember that they had different colors. Well, if I go back to my color library, so materials, I can just do, let's see, 3D printing, no, just colors. Cool. And you can color the pieces that you're referencing. You take your snip, And this is what you would use. You do control C and then you could paste it into your document. I don't have a document, but you can copy and paste your stuff. And that's where you would write your instructions. Alternatively, if you wanted to get fancy, there's another thing that we didn't talk about, and it's called the text command. So it's with the tape measure, it's with the dimensions, but text is going to allow you to click somewhere on your object and draw an arrow. Here, you could type what you want. So you could say, connect two B back front boards. And I just type in like an old box. Two back legs A using 2.5 inch screws. Now this is, this is not required, but if you wanted to, you could type notes. You can also adjust the size of the box with that drag feature in the bottom right. Great. Um, now let's go back. Here I need to remove these five. So I'm going to click and I'm going to hold shift and now I'm going to use the move tool, M. Click the bottom, I'm going to slide upwards. I'm going to click the bottom, slide upwards. And here we have these pieces. So you could separate out your different components and you could take different pictures of how you would put those together. Now you'll see that I removed the front pieces even more and what I would do is I would even move these pieces out one foot. And you'll see that we are constructing an exploded view. So as you're making your tutorial pieces uh, your tutorial like instructions, you're also generating an exploded view of the object. Now you could make 
a, I guess you could do like a line to show. That doesn't look great. You could generate lines that kind of show how things connect, but honestly, I think it's more trouble than the benefit that you'd be getting out of it. Uh, you could also do the same thing with, you know, text bubbles. It creates those lines. But in general, at this point, what you're doing is you are creating a cube which will regiment your movements. I'm always moving one foot in any direction. And it doesn't have to be a foot. It could be, if it's a really tiny thing, it could be one inch. It could be two inches. But you want to make some reference that will keep it standardized. And then what I'm doing is adding colors, I'm adding notes, just to explain how I would piece this together. So if I was to create instructions for this, I have to think, how should I connect these pieces? And I'd start with the back and the front. Then I would connect the front to the back using the side pieces. And if you're, if you're fancy, you could color all your different pieces, different colors. So um, you could even give in your instructions brown part. Corner braces get added like step five or something like that. Um, but anyway, this is how you can controllably explode your object. The key thing here, if you didn't make a copy of your original you're gonna lose it so it make sure you don't close out or save before undoing all the changes that you did to your original chair you don't want to lose that what you also could do is just open this file save as and we could create a new drawing called simple chair explode Now I can redo all my stuff, and guess what? No problems, because when I go back, let's see, I can save this. Right, save. It's saved. Now I can go and open up my simple chair, which I hope is not exploded. Oh, I ruined it. So I lit. Oh, I really messed up. And that's why you want to make different versions before you get into things. However, this conceptually should show you how you can explode your chair and create different snips for assembly. Good luck.